Hi, everyone. Welcome to Take Me to the Cloud. I'm Kim, and with me, I have Senior VP of Business Development, John Shepherdson from SWK Technologies, and Manager of Information Technologies, Nick Barron from Marathon Adventures. John, take it away. Thanks, Kim. Hey, Nick, how are you doing today? Great, great. How are you, John? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about um, you know the history of Marathon Ventures and what you guys do and, and then your role there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Marathon Ventures is a uh, ma food manufacturer here in the Midwest uh, in uh, just a, a little bit out of an hour from uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. We manufacture baking nuts, snack nuts, um, popcorn, coffee um, for private label and for our own brand. Um, uh, so we've been doing that for for about uh, 10 years now. Uh, formerly, we were Herman's Nuthouse, uh, Maggie's Popcorn, and Pears Gourmet Coffee. Um, all three companies were combined in 2014. And uh, and here we are, we, we, we do it all under one roof now. Um, me, I'm the manager of, of uh, Information Technologies. Um, I'm a one-man shop. I pretty much manage everything from the fax machine all the way up to our Azure uh, domain controller and SQL Server. Um, that does include uh, the Sage X3 um, as well. So we I pretty much run the whole show. I do have a few outsourced help, um, but it's only for major projects. And your background's in managed services, correct? Yeah, yeah. So I was in managed services for about 13 years. And it's uh, it's really funny because my buddies and I in managed services, uh, we would always joke that if we ever left managed services, we'd either become farmers or be the uh, manager of IT. And uh, I'm not farming right now. So that's great. Uh, it turned out turned out to be true. That's great. Well, um, so, so what are some of the challenges you guys have had, you know, during the pandemic? Um, you know, I think everybody's been very challenged. You know, we we're just talking about my kids haven't been to school in a year and mm -hmm. and all of those things. So can you tell me a little bit about what you guys have experienced? Yeah, absolutely. So it's interesting. The challenges that we faced, I feel, are a bit different than challenges that some of our other local businesses faced. Um, most of our customer base uh, uh, come from people who bake, um, people who who make stuff while they're at home. And uh, this last year, we had a lot more people at home, a lot more. And so our business actually grew uh, quite substantially that we, you know, in compared to uh, previous years. And one of our biggest challenges was actually making sure we could get product in that we could make in time for our uh, business partners to uh, to then sell that at their stores. Um, so that was kind of our biggest challenge. Um, because we were in we're in the food industry now, we already have some fairly strict um, personnel regulations, and so we decided to uh, kind of increase those a little bit more to to uh, help fight off any type of uh, virus spread or anything like that. And uh, knock on wood, we've been very fairly safe for for most all the year. So uh, it's been it's been a very interesting um, year. So you were positively affected by the pandemic, which I've seen some as well. Um, what um, uh, when you look at the supply chain, um, it sounds like that's where the problems came in. Um, you know, can you uh, talk a little bit about that? Was it your suppliers of raw materials and those kinds of things that you had? Yeah, issues? yeah, absolutely. So uh, we deal with a lot of raw materials. Um, uh, you know, regular Spanish nuts, almonds, walnuts, pecans, so on and so forth, and. Uh, you know, as we are diligent throughout each year, we try and plan how much we're going to spend or how much we're going to bring in physically uh, for our inventory. And we found uh, last uh, last March, uh, just after um, things started closing down, and we started getting locked up, so to speak, um, that our <laughs> we were using a lot more than we thought we were going to be. So we had to uh, scramble to to renew some extra contracts and buy ad hoc some of our raw materials. Um, which uh, it's it, it, it's a problem, but it's a good problem to have when you're a business like ours. Um, not that we would ever want uh, this pandemic to continue, but uh, okay. we, we did find ourselves uh, adversely impacted uh, by it. So, and uh, in that our technology needs and uh, have changed as well. Um, the owner of the company, uh, John Larson was always very interested in face-to-face -face meetings, one-on-one -on -one discussions face-to-face -face in, a, in a room. Um, and we have changed and adapted to use uh, remote meetings and virtual meetings uh, quite a bit more often so, so much so that we might not even have landlines next year because of how <laughs> often we use our, our, right. our virtual meetings. Um, so it's, uh, it's 
like I said, it, it, it's been a very big change in landscape, not only for uh, us as a food industry, but us, uh, you know, my department specifically as an IT, um, as an IT department. So it's been, uh, been yeah, a very good year. When this started, I was on an airplane twice a month. And uh, to say that it's been a uh, adjustment would be an mm-hmm. understatement. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> for my family and everyone, for sure. <laughs> so so uh, how did, um, um, how did uh, your X3 um, ERP system, you know, help you with, with those challenges? Or how did so you inter- apply that to the Right. Right. So interestingly enough, we um, we were on version six last February uh, mm-hmm. of X3, uh, which is uh, came out in 2014 when, <laughs> when right. we uh, when we brought uh, started yeah. getting everything together. Um, and we actually upgraded to version 12 last uh, last March, last nice. May. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, we've had some really substantial changes. And uh, with SWK's help, with, uh, it, it's been it's been really a dream. We, 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 we did this upgrade and uh, our planning was so forthright and so uh, articulated that we didn't have any issues infrastructurally when we did this upgrade. Um, we had our staff, they were fairly well versed in the new product. Um, we had a, a, a version 12 server up and running for a few months um, so that they could go in and play and, and, and learn how to do some of those extra things while we were waiting for uh, some of our other projects to actually finish up. So, um, you know, SWK's role is integra- uh, very integral uh, in in all of that. Um, knowledgeable group of people that that came and uh, uh, we did some remote meetings. We did do uh, in December of 2019. We did a uh, a in person conference room meeting. Uh, a con- conference room pilot, I believe, is what a US right. term it. Um, and uh, major discoveries on how our processes are and how we can change them and. Um, we've been we've been slowly you know chipping away at that block to change uh, change how we do our our day to day work uh, trying to let X X three automate some of those those manual tasks so uh, it's been it's been uh, really good and it's SWK has been a great partner to have throughout all this. Well, we we appreciate you being a customer. So um, you, does your office staff did they um, did they come into the office or did they work from home or so, is that still going on? We still have we still have some staffers that are uh, remote. Um, I'm mm-hmm. actually remote uh, two two or three days out of the week out of our business mm-hmm. week, uh, and then I'm in the office for the other days. But we have some staff that are home. You know, at this point, it's probably going to be permanently. Um, uh, right. Their production has been really well. Their their production has been really re- a lot stronger, and uh, they have a lot more peace of mind and. Um, <laughs> uh, their mental faculties seem to be in better shape uh, when they get to wear sweatpants at work. Um, <laughs> it just seems right. like that's just a better fit. Now, granted, with uh, we do have a physical need for employees because we produce products and we have machines that run products through them. So, sure. Um, sure. so I don't think I mean that that won't ever uh, really go away. But a lot of our front office staff, uh, we've uh, we've built the infrastructure in a way that we that they can just work from home they can just remote into their machine and 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 do their work so um it's been it's been a blessing i i feel yeah i i wonder if um i i believe that you know this some of this is going to stick around you know i don't think i'll ever go back to two airplanes and you know two or three airplanes a month mm-hmm. um i just you know they we, we've all successfully handled this this year and so mm-hmm. um i i think maybe that that you, your success will continue because people are going to be at home and they'll take a break and go make some banana bread or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. No, exactly. And uh, I agree. I think that there's uh, everyone wants to be able to feel safe when they go to a restaurant. Um, and there's mm-hmm. no doubt that that's going to come back. But I sure. don't think it's going to be a um, uh, an environment where where people are doing that six times a week it, it, because we have so many other businesses that have that have cropped up from this that have really. Um, really take in form and it allows people to be social and still be at home. Uh, right. And it's, it's a, a landscape that I don't think is going to change back to what it was 29 in 2019. Do you also do business in, with grocery stores as well, I assume? Yeah. Yeah. So we have some um, a private label business partners that we work with. So that private label is, it means it's their brand. So um, okay. we, uh, we help them build out the, the, the film and the labels and, and, uh, we do all the packaging and uh, boxing and everything, and then we send it to them. And then it sits on their shelves as though it's theirs. Um, uh, for example, um, Target is one of our one of our business partners, and uh, their 
we just went through a revamp on their private label because they went from market pantry to good and gather. And uh, so we're, the, you know, if you look on the back of those bags, you're going to see our name on there. Um, right. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been pretty awesome. Pretty awesome seeing these different changes. Um, and a lot of those business partners have been uh, very gracious with us. You know, uh, their, their demands are um, a little bit more understanding during this right. time. And right. I think that, um, I think that them being able to lax on that has also helped them under them see that uh, that they can that they can allow themselves to. So it's right. been it's been a really good, uh, like I said, a really good year. So as as things open up and you know this year and the vaccine gets out and into next year, what do you guys see coming down the pipe for a marathon? Uh, for us, I think it's probably going to be business as usual. Um, we have uh, obviously we're we're changing up our mentality as far as technology. Um, we are on this refresh that we did from uh, version six to version twelve. We uh, we've had regular meetings about optimization and regular meetings about uh, continually pushing those those quality of life changes uh, into the system. Um, and it's in the end, all that's going to do is allow for growth. It's going to allow us to forecast better. It's going to allow us to schedule better and plan better. Um, and use up more physical resources um, with a smaller group or even the same group uh, that we have today. Right. Well, we really appreciate you uh, joining us today and uh, thank you for your, uh, for your uh, um, input. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and thank you for having me. Thanks guys. This is a great discussion on the nature of marathons, ventures, operations, challenges, and technology. We'll see you next time.